passer deliciae meae puellae. Qui cum ludera, quin sinu tenere, qui primum digitum dara patenti, et acres solet incitar morsus, cum desiderio meo netenti, carum nescio quid iubet locari, et solaciolum sui doloris, credut tum gravas acquiescat ardor. Tecum ludera sicut ipsa possem, et tristes animi levara curas. It's part of the poetic tradition for elegiasts to write a poem to their girlfriend's pet. Marshall wrote to his lady's lapdog, Ovid to Corinna's parrot. Here, Catullus is going to be contrasting the joy that her sparrow can bring to her with his own depression. So here we go. Catullus' girlfriend's pet is a sparrow. A bit ridiculous pet, but Sappho, Catullus's idol, does depict Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love, in a chariot being led by sparrows. So perhaps this sparrow, while referencing Sappho, also brings up love, which is reinforced by Delicii right after. The next four lines form a tricolon crescens, three phrases that grow in length in succession. The verb solet, she is accustomed, or she usually, should be translated first and governs all four of these infinitives, luder, tener, dar, and inquitar. A quick grammatical note about line three, the verb dar, to give, expects an accusative, what is being given, and a dative, to whom the accusative is given. Here the accusative is the primum digitum, her fingertip, and the dative is the participle appetenti. We would translate it as to him seeking it. The next four lines are a bit more complex. The impersonal verb lubet takes a dative. It is pleasing for our dative, desiderio meo netenti. In the next line, yokari is the infinitive off from the impersonal verb, and its deponent, that's why it looks passive, to play. Its object is carum, a dear thing like a game, and nescio quid is I don't really know what, which gives us the idea of some game. So it's easy to translate this line as to play some sweet game. Which, what is this game? I don't know. But it's definitely a solaciolum sui dolores, a comfort for her grief. The idea is that Catullus's girlfriend plays with her sparrow when she is feeling sad or lonely. Line 7 gives us a purpose clause for the reason why she plays with her pet sparrow. Remember, purpose clauses answer the question why. The ardor gravis, her heavy passion, is the subject of acquiescat. But what's the credo doing at the beginning of the line? Catullus wants to think that she is depressed when she plays with a sparrow. But is she really? Now on to the real reason for this hymn to the sparrow. The pulsem is an optative subjunctive, and it expresses a hope that just won't happen if only I could. The complementary infinitives luder and lewar are governed by this word. Really, the point is that he could play with a sparrow, but he can't get the same relief from his heavy passion that his girlfriend can by doing the same. And I don't think he likes that. If we look at the meta structure of this poem, the overarching structure, the first eight lines depend solely on the first word, passer and they lead up to the last two, where our gaze is shifted from the sparrow and girlfriend to the poet. At the same time, the tone of the poem shifts from tender and lighthearted, almost jocular, to a serious lament. See that the last word of the poem is curas, Catullus's anxiety. Let's read it again. Passer deliciae meae puellae, quicum ludera, quinsinu tenere, qui primum digitum dara patenti, et acres solet incitar morsus, cum desiderio meo netenti, carum nescio quid iubet locari, et solaciolum sui doloris, credut tum gravas acquiescat ardor. Tecum ludera sicut ipsa possem, et tristes animi levara curas. 